Good evening, this is Lizzie Cocker from Tripoli. It's one o'clock in the morning. Um, we arrived here this afternoon at about 3 p.m. after crossing the Tunisian border. My first impressions um, on the three hour drive to Tripoli, where that life is very much continuing as normal in Libya. There are very few checkpoints, and having spoken to previous delegates, uh, delegates who have been on previous delegations with global civilians for peace, the level of security is even less than before, despite NATO intensifying its attacks on the, on the country. Um, there seems to be no shortages of anything. Businesses are open as usual. There are only shortages of petrol, so that's the only thing that there is queues for. And otherwise, there's also a shortage of, of labor because um, immigrants from other parts of Africa, black-skinned Africans, have been forced to flee um, because of the racist rebels are targeting them because of these false stories of um, black-skinned mercenaries being hired by the, by the government. Um, we touched base with the fact-finding commission at 6.30 and then at about uh, 10 o'clock, between 10 and 10.15, maybe a little bit later, in the space of 15 minutes, we heard between five and six massive e explosions caused by NATO bombs they were so big that they caused the, the window here to shudder. Very shortly after that, we saw fireworks in the sky um, coming from Green Square, just down the road from here. So we went to have a look and there were big celebrations going on where there were uh, young and old black and white Libyans out celebrating together. And what were they celebrating? They were celebrating the defiance um, and unity in the face of NATO aggression. And we were driving in a car with uh, two of our Libyan friends. And there were four sisters in a car, um, black and white sisters, hanging out of the windows, waving green flags and playing music. Um, a couple of the sisters had Kalashnikov rifles. Uh, we went to take a picture of these, these sisters. And, one, and the black sister uh, turned around and was you know, obviously very angry, saw, uh, saw us as Westerners and was, was ready to jump on us and, uh, you know, she, she obviously thought, felt that we were hostile to, to her country, quite understandably so, but then she realised quite quickly and her, her sisters, uh, I think, had a little word with her and helped to, to calm her down about us and realised that we are there in uh, solidarity with her. Um, and so they, instead of turning their Kalashnikov rifles towards us, they turned them in the sky and carried on their, their celebrations. Um, so the, you know, the impression in, in Green, Green Square of, uh, of the celebrations is that the Libyan people are very much defiant, very much united, very much ready um, to take on anyone who is, who is a threat to them. And that they, and it, as I mentioned before, that there, there is a very relaxed security situation and life continues as normal. This very clearly shows that the Lib Libyan people are refusing to be intimidated and they are confident that life uh, will go, life, Libyan life will continue, NATO will come, they will go, they will lose and they will go and the Libyan people will persevere and that's what they are doing. So tomorrow we're going to um, visit a children's school that was bombed recently by NATO. So we will uh, report back on that. So please check Lizzie's Liberation blog or Sons of Malcolm blog. Um, and we'd just also like to thank the Fact Finding Commission for hosting us here in Libya. Um, so at that, thank you and good night.